One night I woke up in bed, I was I just sat upright like that, I was covered in sweat and I was puffing and panting, going, <laughs> holding me guts and I woke up the woman next to me and I said, look, I just had a dream and this dream was real, I felt the pain and everything. I said, I've just been shot, in the, I just dreamt I got shot in the guts and she said, oh yeah, good on you, I went back to sleep and anyway, Two, uh, two days later, I had the same dream again. I woke up, sat right up in bed, covered in sweat, puffing and panting, holding my guts again. And I woke her up and I said, Look, I just had that dream again. I just got shot in the guts. She got, she, and so we talked about it the next two days. Anyway, two days later, um, I was going around to my mate's joint, had a few beers. It was Christmas Eve, and I just, as soon as I walked out the back door, the thought came to me, I hope I don't get shot in the guts tonight. Anyway, I just went around there, a few beers. Anyway, ended up getting shot in the guts, and so I didn't really give God a thought. I, I thought, well, is it prophecy? Is it premonition? It, you know, what is it? Is it is subconscious? Is it the aliens? And you know, buzzing around, or is it God? And I put my money on the aliens buzzing around. That's what I really thought. And they made me set up a little older, like a little older, little mirror, candles, incense burning, and I read this prayer. And the prayer, you ask, you, you invite, you ask this thing to infuse your being. Anyway, I did, and I started shaking like this, and I'm reading this prayer. I'm thinking, what's going on here? What's going on here? And this spirit's moved into me. It was, in the end, there was voices just getting in my head, it was, you know, this thing was driving me, the voices were getting clearer, go here, go there, do this, do that. Yeah, so I st stuck everything to the side and I started following Jesus and as soon as I do that, done that, and this thing living inside, this demon that I'd invited in, he, st he just went totally off, he turned me brains, my brains were like scrambled eggs, the anxiety and depression I had was like knots tightening in my guts, it was just absolutely, I'd have blown my head off a hundred times, I had the gun ready once, I was just going to do myself in, do someone else in as well, the voices in my head, it was non-stop, I couldn't read, couldn't read anything, I couldn't watch telly, I couldn't think, I'd have a conversation with someone and there, there's one, two conversations and another two or three going in my head, so I just got drunker and drunker and stayed drunk and didn't really care what I said or what I thought. I'd just go with the flow, you know, let them drive. And anyway, in the end I was an absolute just wreck because that thing in me didn't want me going anywhere near the truth, which is Jesus, that I know now. I used to play a mind game, you, you sort of empty your mind or try to empty it and then ask a question and you'd wait till the voice told you whatever time it was and anyway I said what's the exact time and he said um, 4.17 and I thought 4.17 that's weird it's only up past three and then I thought I'll try it again and anyway what's the exact time and Matthew came into me and I thought Matthew Matthew's in the Matthew 4.17 in the Bible I better get up and have a look at that. So I got up the next day, Matthew 4, 17 said, Repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. And I showed Poss. I said, look at this, you know, God's trying to tell something here. This is a definite message, you know. Maybe we better go to church. So anyway, we walked into church. Stoned off our heads. Thought we'll just go in and have a look. And I'll just show you. This is what I look like when I walk into church. I don't know if you can see that or what, but that's... You know, and they thought I was the devil himself. <laughs> and anyway, three months later, the pastor got up the front and asked me, you want to become a Christian? And I thought, I'm thinking, I thought I already was one. I'm coming to church, I know I've been here for a while, what are you on about? And, he, and I said, oh, whatever, you know. And he said, well, just repeat after me, say the sinner's prayer. And, so I started, he just started leading me in the sinner's prayer, but then all of a sudden this thing in my head got, is yelling, like yelling, like someone standing right next to you, yelling full on in your ear, no, you can't do this, you can't do this, you've still got dope growing in the bush, and I'm thinking, 
what's that got to do with anything and what am I doing anyway and this thing's going off and he's trying to talk, I had to follow him and this thing's yelling in my ear and as soon as I said right I'll, you know the sinner's prayer, I believe you're the son of God, Jesus, I believe you come to die on the cross for our sins I'm oh, sorry for my sins and I was sorry, I'd had, I was an absolute wreck, I just would have done anything to, you know. I believe you died on the cross for my sins and I ask you into my life, take control of my life right now and I start shaking again and I'm thinking, oh here we go again, you know, what's going on here? <laughs> anyway, it's like you're shaking on the inside, like really shivering, like full on. Anyway. We done that and I'm thinking, oh, I feel a bit better now. And I went home and I had to chuck me dope straight in the fire. I um, yeah, just burnt all my occult books. I had a heap of them, chucked them all in the fire. I just had to do it. I don't even know why I was doing it the day before. There's no way I'd have chucked me dope all them books in the fire, but they went in, bang, everything just went in. And I didn't even know why. I just knew I had to do it. The next day I woke up, or the, that night, I um, had a dream that was just the words in big flame, 2618, and um, I woke up the next day, I knew that was from God, because every night for the last two or three years, every time I'd go, to, I was doing these exercises to make your dreams come real, and I'd done them that much that every little dream, didn't matter what it was, was just like World War Three going on me head and there was tidal waves, earthquakes, it was just full on me brains were that scrambled, I couldn't sleep, I'd go to bed and I'd wake up and I'd be just like, a, there was no peace, no rest and anyway, that night I knew something had happened because I woke up and didn't have me dreams and there was 2618, big letters, and I thought 2618, right, this has got to be another message from God. I got, got the Bible, Leviticus, it said, um, if you, 2618 says, if you continue to do any of these things, I'll punish you for your sins seven times over. And I go, whoa, whoa, yeah, well, I get the message, God. I don't even want to be punished once, let alone seven times. I'll, I'll be a good boy, you know. And, and I felt really good all the way between. I was telling God, I feel so good. I feel so light. I feel like I can float. I'm being set free. This, I mean, brain stop. This peace. This quiet. It was like standing in the middle of Burke Street. This, the difference. This, and then standing out in the middle of the bush on a still night. It was that that much. And I'm thinking, oh God, fair dinkum. And I was telling him. I told him over every day, over and over again for about three months. And this exactly what I was saying, God, you could tie me to a stake in the middle of a desert, throw rocks at me for the rest of my life and I'd still be better off. And I was serious. If that had happened, I'd have been laughing at whoever because I was in such torment, you know. And that's, people are blowing their heads off and suiciding because their mind, they can't control their mind. And, and that they only need to invite Jesus in to give him a go and he'll fix it for, for them, you know.